So here's a different one for you, and one you've probably been looking for for a while if you follow the channel. But can we get this 1972 Ford Ranchero to run and drive for the first time in a long, long time? Well, I don't know, but we're about to find out together. He's a nut job. Well, here we are. Um, been talking about this one for a while, and uh, we haven't actually had the opportunity to showcase it on the channel. We just had so much stuff going on, and uh, the Jeep's in the shop and there. You've seen in the video, last video of it. I'm waiting on a couple things so I can get the rear axle back under it and get it moved back out. And since I'm a parts hoarder, and the whole other side of my shop is full of parts. It leaves me standing out here to do this. So let's do a quick walk around and take a look at it and let's introduce you to this thing because there's going to be at least two videos on this. At least two. Uh, it shouldn't take me any more than that, but uh, I think we can get it all wound up in two videos. This is a 1972 Ford Ranchero in 1972, well, and other years, but 72 was a one year only body style and they used the Torino nose. You can tell kind of by, well, looking at it. Um, this has the GT hood on it. I don't know if this is an actual GT, but it does have the GT hood on it. It does have the 351 Cleveland. Unfortunately, it's an automatic. Uh, if it was mine, I would solve that problem. Slot, mag, slot mags, fish mouth grill. You can't get better than that. Uh, locking gas cap, that's great. Uh, all in all, she's not a bad looking car. It uh, looks fairly straight. I don't see much weight reduction on it. There's a little bit right there on the outside a little bit not much we we'll come around it so that's a good sign right okay so uh let's take a look at the inside real quick this is a car that was somebody's project that they just kind of quit on uh door panel curling a little bit there at the bottom the dash is well cracked heater box is laying in the floor the bezel around the gauges is laying right there it doesn't look like it's hurt it's just laying there somebody put some bucket seats in it no headliner hey, if you watch our last video we've got a remedy for a headliner and the seats uh if you look real close you gotta look real close, but right along that seam right there, it's got a blowout. It's kind of, the upholstery is kind of tore. Like right along the seam, it, there's a tear in the upholstery. I know it's hard to see. One one on that side too. You, you kind of have to look hard for them. Faster side, not quite as bad. Smaller, a little smaller tear. Uh, yeah, it's begging to be cut and put a four speed in, but not my problem. I'd say the car was originally green. You can kind of tell by the fact it's green. Let's see if we can get the hood up on this thing. And the uh, door shut real good. Get the hood up and take a look at what's laying under there. The hood released the leaf model. And they've got a, a clothes hanger under here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my motor turns. That's 
That's good. Yeah. Well, look for yourself. What pretty much any car looks like after it's sit for a while. The motor does turn over free. This is a 351 Cleveland. Power steering, AC, power brakes. Really optioned well, well loaded car. Um, it's got the heater hose bypass here. I would say she's probably leaking inside because somebody deleted on it. Uh, yeah, well, it's going to take some cleaning up and get all this crap out of here. And then we can start to work on it. I guarantee you that that is stopped up with old gas. But I've got a carburetor on the shelf in there that I know runs. Has tons of vacuum leaks because, well, they're not hooked up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So now the plan is just to get it, get it running. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So today we we'll get started on the uh, trying to get the rancher to run, uh, clean some of this brush and leaves off of here. Uh, we know the carburetor is a little grungy on it, so I've got another carburetor I'm going to slap on it, and we'll visually go over some stuff, but I think after we slap a carburetor on it, I'm going to slap a battery in it and pour some fuel down the carburetor and see if I can't get it to um, crank up and start pulling some fuel. We know the car ran it one time, but it's got some electrical issues. But I can't diagnose and work on those until I get it back up and running. Also, even though I'm in spitting distance of the shop, y'all excuse the wind. The wind is rough today. Uh, even though I'm in spitting distance of the shop, I'm going to try to work out of the back of the ramp truck. Because the point of this is for this truck to be self-sufficient and be able to do anything I need to straight from it. So I'm going to try to see proof of concept today so let's dig into this thing i'm not a glove guy but that's a good hose good clamps uh but i am going to put some gloves on right now as i dig through this thing too because uh, <clears throat> i don't know what's in here so she's sitting for a while Since it rained last night, again, probably, I don't have to worry too much about that. Probably not even hooked up on it. Uh, I don't know what that is. Some electrical stuff hanging there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to get this... Uh, Fuel line disconnected. Um, fuel line disconnected and pull this carburetor off. Wires all seem still to be good. Uh, this seem to have a spacer on it. Full of oil. Alright, I'm going to grab a screwdriver and uh, a socket and we'll go ahead and pull this carburetor off and we'll stick another one on here uh, stick a battery in it and we're just going to go for it and see see if we can get it run if we can get fuel up here to it and go through the paces as I mentioned before I'm trying to be self-sufficient out of this truck and just want to try it out and see if I can be so I've got all my boxes in here and uh, I'm gonna see if 
maybe we can just be completely self-sufficient out of here and we'll find out here we'll find out here pretty quick i guess and uh find out if we're missing anything to to accomplish that all right i believe i've got what i need here to accomplish that the ultimate goal the way the ultimate goal the way i got the ramp truck set up would be for me to be able to go somewhere with a truck and try to get a car up and running uh that would be the ultimate goal Ugh. okay well broken clamp or not out of there now all right switch to the wrench dropped one nuts there that's great yeah that's great yeah let's see if we can't find that oh ah. let's get that off of there i'm not sure that gasket is usable or not all right i know somebody out there right now screaming because i'm putting an elder brock carburetor on it but you'll be all right i promise the mean old carburetor won't hurt you end of the day some people like them some people don't but if it's a working carburetor, it's a working carburetor. It's the way I see it. That lost nut is going to give me a problem. What we have here is failure to communicate. All right. I want the one over here. <sighs> there is fuel filters on it. Uh, I'm going to leave the in advance on the distributor unhooked. Grab a little gas. Prime the carburetor. Throw a battery in it, and uh, we'll see if we can't see if we can't get it to start. Let's see if I can't find a way to hook up the uh, throttle cable here. We know the motor's free and turns over. Uh, I don't know if it's got any spark. We'll find out in a minute. I'm going to try to fill the bowls, but we're in a windstorm, so hey, we've got some in the bowl. I'm going to pour a bunch right down the thing there, and I'm going to twist on the key and see if it lights off. Hopefully, it'll start pouring some of this aged gas up into the carburetor. Okay. Okay, so maybe we don't have spark right now. Let's look and see what we got going on right here. We got wires hooked to it. We got an accelerator pump. I knew this carburetor was good. Oh, oh wait a minute. Oh, we got a newer. Got a new coil on it. All right. Let's uh, cap off. Let's look at that situation. Oh, all new. All new. I'm going to go ahead and pull the button off so I can see. And then I'm going to turn the ignition switch on and flick that and see if we can get some spark out of it. All right. The switch is on. 
Let me get you so you can see what's going on in here. And let's just see if we can get some. Okay. We have no spark. Okay, so we got no spark there. I'm going to take a piece of this random wire that's laying over here. And I'm going to see if I run some from the hot post over to our coil, bypassing our switch, if we then get spark, because we may have an ignition issue. I'm going to ram this wire down on the hot post there, so I know it's hot. I'm going to come over here. For our coil, find our hot wire that comes in from the switch, take it off, put that on there, and I do have spark now. Okay, let me take that back off real quick. I do have a spark now. Let's stick the cap back on. Don't make it easy to get your fingers in on this side. That's for sure. Right. Now, let's connect this hot wire. Since we know that will give a spark. And now I'm going to twist on the key and see what happens. Hopefully, that gives us some crankage. So... There is a chance that the uh, points are not firing correctly or they're weak. And uh, I guess what the next step is, is to maybe clean them a little bit. Do a little cleaning on them and see if we can get a little, a little hotter spark out of it. I know... I know our carburetor is good. I know we're getting fuel. Those, well, I'm pulling it straight down it, so I know we're getting fuel. Ha! Huh. You know why one won't crank when it's getting sparked? Because you leave the rotor button off. Because you leave the rotor button off. Because you leave the rotor button off. You know, I'm not like some of these uh, high dollar YouTube channels. When I'm an idiot, I'll show you I'm an idiot. Yeah. I'm an idiot. Your fault. I was in a hurry to try to show you it would run. Oh. Let's see here. Alright guys. Now let's see if the the spark is where it needs to be and the fuel okay so now we know we're getting a little sparky because well it tried to crank Let's see if I can do it with a key now and maybe keep it running. Hmm. We may have about killed our battery. Ah. Uh, yeah that that happens too we know it tried to start we also know that for whatever reason the the wire coming from the switch out here is not functioning so i'm gonna unhook the battery cable i'm gonna throw it on the uh charger for a few minutes and see if we can't get the battery good and hot uh while we look at a couple other things Did we ever get fuel up here out of the tank? No. Uh, I 
All right, so I'm going to put this on the battery charger, throw some juice in it, and we will uh, try again once I get some juice in this. We'll fill the bowls all the way up on the carburetor so that once it starts off, we can keep it running for just a minute and see if we can get fuel up in this filter. That's the goal. All right, we'll jump the old battery on wide open for a little while and uh, throw some juice in it. Uh, we've got a little more fuel. And then we'll throw some more in it, try to fill the bowls up and see if this thing will bark off. The fact that this thing tried to bark off uh, there means that we're getting everything we need. We're getting air, we're getting spark, and we're getting fuel. So that means that it will, in fact, actually start. We just need to get the right combination of suck, bang, blow to make this thing work. Um, but it's looking promising. The only thing I don't know is I don't know why we don't have fuel in this filter yet. I want to look into that and see if there's something obvious going on there uh, while this battery charges. But yeah, we're probably we're probably pretty close to getting it fired up. That's the goal for this uh, episode or this video is to get it to crank and run, and then we'll do another video uh, in a few days or so on cleaning it up, washing it, uh, trying to help the uh, issues it may have, whether it needs. A new wire ran inside or whatever it may need we'll try to help those issues all right i went and got me a biscuit let the battery charge for a minute and uh let's hook our little hot wire back up and actually i'm just gonna uh, crank from out here Get over here again. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. She will crank up and run. Sounds like we may have a vacuum leak somewhere. The way it idled up. You hear how the motor just sped way up? Still don't have any fuel here. Oh, let's see. Vacuums are plugged off there. Vacuums are plugged off there. <laughs> Huh. It certainly wants to run, doesn't it? A little adjustment will make a difference. What is going on here? Let's go back to this again. know what I can use huh. 
and to get my fancy wrench. Let's see if I can get it in here. Uh, see what happens with a little timing in it. One more again, one more again. Really? Oh, like a big swing at it. I know you're getting fuel. The timing's fairly close. Coming is fairly close. All right, we uh, let the battery charge for a little bit. Uh, went in and put me a jacket on because. The weather's starting to get cold out here. And uh, I made a couple tweaks on this carburetor. Let's see what happens. There's obviously something else wrong. We have some kind of ignition issue, and uh, I'm not sure yet what it is. We'll have to do some more investigating into this thing. All right, the more I fool this thing, the more I'm convinced there's an ignition issue. Uh, it doesn't want to crank. I'll flip around and play with the points a little bit. If I try to crank, then I'll go back to not wanting to crank. So I'm convinced there's something wrong with the distributor. Now, this distributor is not for a Cleveland motor. This is actually the distributor that was in the uh, station wagon before I switched to an MSD. So it won't work in a Cleveland. But the guts out of it might i won't know till i take it apart and see but i'm thinking i'm just going to rob the guts out of this distributor put into this distributor and see if we can make it work i i really think they should work now i don't know if this will work at all either uh like anything, there's always a chance, right? So, give me a minute, and I'm going to jerk the guts out of this thing and slide them over in this distributor and just see what happens.
Well, guys, we may be shut down on this one. I tried to patch up the distributor only to find that there's uh, some issues uh, inside the distributor with the shaft and all. Uh, I don't know that we're going to be able to get this thing to work. I don't think we're getting any spark at all now. Um, whew, uh, we may get shut down on this one to like an order a new distributor and get it in. The the base plate on the distributor is wonky and it's moving. So basically, when you set the points, as soon as you start, the base plate floats around and the points are not are not doing what they're supposed to do. And I was going to put an electronic box out of another distributor I had here in it. But once I seen the plate moving, I can't set the gap on it either. And it's literally moving the box out and back. So I don't think we're going to be able to get it. I am going to uh, try one more time to get them a little closer to where they're supposed to be. Uh, right now, I don't think they're actually closing all the way. Let me grab a light so I can see out of the truck. Yeah. We're not. Yep. I can see a little gap in them when they're supposed to be closed right now. Wait. Let's change the gap on them. Just a, a minute little bit. Let's try that. I'm not expecting much of anything out of it at this point. We've uh, kind of exhausted what we can do with this distributor. We're going to hook our hot wire back up. I'll be a monkey's blue ass at crunk up. Son of a bitch at crunk up. Now, that's not exactly what I would call running, but it did crank. It did try. Maybe a skosh more timing. It did crank. It did try. Maybe I'll fill the bowls back up and try one more time. But this distributor is absolutely garbage. It's in this thing. So... Let, let me grab this old distributor here. So here's an old distributor I was going to take the parts out of. This plate won't work. But there's a plate down here that the points bolt or screw to. You can see there's a screw hole there, there, and there. Points and condenser. All right. You set your points gap based off these cam positions, these lobes on this cam right here as it, as it rotates. You can see the little points. That's what you set your points gap off of. So they open and close. They close on the flats, open on the points. Well, what's happening is this plate right here, something is broken or, and this plate is physically wandering out and back. So instead of the points opening and closing, the points are kind of doing this. You know, and we're not getting consistent spark. Uh, I thought I could take the guts out of this Windsor distributor. They came out of the wagon because it was a brand new distributor when I bought it. Um, but I went with MSD on it. So I thought I could take the guts out of it and put it in there. But that is not the case. So I'm going to see if I can put some more fuel in it and see if we can get it fired back up one more time. Uh, and maybe run just a minute longer.
Fire in the hole. Fire in the hole. Well, there you go. I'm going to call it on this video because we did get it to start. We did get it run for just a second. But honestly, it's not going to run anywhere close to decent until, until we put a distributor in it. So I'm going to have to come up with a distributor. Uh, if you have a distributor for a 351 Cleveland that you would like to uh, help us out with, um, I'll put a mailing address in the comment or uh, in the description, and uh, you can uh, look at the description. The mailing address will be there. And if you have one and want to send it to us, let us know and send it to us right now. I know I'm going to need a distributor and uh, possibly a fuel pump. So. There is a few things that we are definitely going to need, but the car started and the car did run for a minute. That was the goal for today is to get it to start and run. It does not run well. We have several issues to address in the next video we do on this. They probably will not come in order, but we have several things to address on the next video. One, we've got some electrical issues because the ignition switch wire doesn't actually put fire to the coil. I don't know where the breakdown is there. So we have a electrical issue somewhere in the ignition system. Also in the ignition, in the ignition system, we have a distributor that is trying to become a variable timing distributor and that was not an option on these cars. Um, the plate is just moving around in there. So going to have to replace the distributor, going to have to replace the fuel pump and going to have to check down, track down a couple of electrical gremlins. Uh, once we get those done, the motor sounded healthy, so it sounds like it would be a good running car, but it's not going to run more than a few seconds at a time in its current state. So we got to go through and do these things, and then we can do things like tune up, change the oil and all that once we get it running well. There is going to be more videos on it. We are going to... Uh, not only make this thing a running driving car, uh, there's a rusty spot in the floorboard. We're going to patch that. We're going to put that gauge bezel back up in it. We're going to put the heater box back up in it that was laying in the floor. Uh, possibly some seat covers, some carpet, you know, uh, try to correct the paint on this thing. We've got a few things we're going to do with this thing to make it a really decent uh, low buck car. Uh, so stay tuned for that. There will be more videos coming. The next uh, video we probably do will be back on the Jeep, probably, I think, maybe. I don't really know, but this will come back and get more work done to it. Uh, the weather is turning cold and going to be really cold this week. Um, we're expecting cold for us. I know some places are way, way colder than us. Um, that's your fault for living there. Uh, For us, it's going to get cold. Well, the 50s is probably normal for us right now, and that's not a problem, but it's gradually going to get colder each day this week, and this weekend it's supposed to be uh, 12, 15 degrees, something like that, and I'm not going to be outside working on this. So the next thing I'll work on will probably be uh, back on a Jeep so I can be back inside the shop and have the heat turned on, uh, possibly. So... You want to see more on the ranchero you got to hit that subscribe button hit the little thumbs up make a comment help get these videos out there share them help grow the channel we are are growing fairly well um but we need your help so support your local youtuber youtuber local youtuber um all serious listen all seriousness guys uh, I really appreciate each one of you who like, subscribe, and comment. Uh, you really do help make these things possible. Uh, I'm thankful for every one of you. God bless you. I hope the Lord blesses you more today than he did yesterday.
hang around. We're going to make this Ranchero a really decent driver car. So uh, hang around. It's going to get a lot, lot better. We didn't get quite as far as I wanted to in this video because I would like to have seen it yard drive in this video. Uh, but the distributor shuts me down and nobody locally has one that I can source. But never fear. We will get it all figured out and we will make it better than it was before. So we'll see y'all in the next one. I'd say he's a nut job. <laughs>